Welcome everyone. My name is Isabella Cosentino. I am a PhD student in Structural Engineering at Politecnico di Torino. I am very pleased to participate in this first virtual conference on structural integrity. I'm going to tell you about an experimental setup for uniaxial cycling loading of concrete that we are currently developing at Politecnico di Torino. I'll make a quick introduction to concrete technology and innovative cementitious compositis. Then I'll show the innovative cementitious compositis that my research group has been studying at Politecnico di Torino for several years to then explain the motivation and objectives of uniaxial cycling testing of innovative cementitious materials. So, I'll describe an experimental setup for cycling loading of concrete that we are developed. At the end, conclusions and future developments can be drawn. Concrete is one of the oldest and most used construction materials in the world mainly due to its low cost, its availability and its long durability. Its principal components have always been water, cement and fine coarse aggregates. It has adapted to ever new architectural and construction needs, becoming the material of choice for big buildings and infrastructure in the world designed to last centuries. Innovative cementitious composite materials are drawing considerable interest due to their substantial improved mechanical properties as compared to ordinary cement-based materials. They can be divided into three groups, supplementary cementitious materials, for example fly ash, silica fume, blast furnace leg, alternative cementitious materials, for example calcium sulfur aluminate, magnesium oxide, geopolymers, and manufacturing cementitious materials, for example, carbon nanotubes, nanoxides of metal, graphene. The graph shows the particle size and the specific surface area for concrete materials. Nanoengineered and high-performance concrete are located top left of the graph because their particle size is very small and their specific surface area is very large compared to conventional concrete. This means a better performance compared to conventional materials. Nanotechnology can change the world of concrete. The most promising contemporary developments include the synthesis of new forms of carbon. In 2007-2009, the research group of Professor Ferro started experimenting with carbon nanotubes in cementitious composite materials, finding excellent mechanical properties but also problems related to functionalizations and cost. Thus, a solution was sought by incorporating biochar, which is the subproduct of biomass paralysis processes, and is a fine, porous and light material, rich in carbon at zero cost. So, we investigate paralyzed nanomicrocarbon particles obtained from hemp dart, polyethylene beads and coconut shells, was bagasse fibers, hazelnut and peanut shells, coffee power, a standardized biochar, in different percentage of addition according to the cement weight. Compression and flexural tests were carried out. Flexural compressive strength and fracture energy increased in specimen with the additions of small quantities of pyrolyzed carbon nanoparticles. This slide shows the load crack mouth open displacement example curve that reflects how the load increases and also how the area under the curve increased, generating a bigger fracture energy in biochar-based composites. The enhanced ductility of the specimens appears to be promising and particularly switched to structural application under severe dynamic loading conditions, for example earthquakes, impact, blast, we know that the stress-strain relationship proposed by Collins and others for unconfined concrete takes into account the low reductivity of high-strand concrete, as you can see in the graph on this slide.
However, we realize that setting response is essential to understand the effects of unloading and reloading on the material, to examine how it behaves in the transition from tension to compression, to characterize its properties in terms of energy dissipation and strain rate sensitivity. To date, there isn't much literature on this matter. The objective of our research are to investigate the specific behavior of cementitious materials under cycle loading, to develop a constitutive relationship for cement-based compositives under cycle loading, to evaluate strength, deformability and energy dissipation capacity of cementitious compositives within the context of seismic assessment of existing buildings. To set the cycling loading process, cylindrical specimens of concrete were used. The specimens were extracted using a core drill from a hardened concrete block. Then, they were carefully examined and prepared by leveling and subjected to compression testing using the normalized procedures. This concrete was characterized by a compression strength of about 40 MPa and a maximum diameter of aggregate equal to 14 mm. A series of homothetic specimens, 8 to diameter ratio fixed as 2, were tested, with a diameter of 44 mm to ensure a ratio 1 to 3 between the maximum size of the aggregate present in the concrete and the diameter of the specimens in order to not influence the resistance measured. We experimented cyclic alternate compression testing test to examine how the material behaves in the transition from compression to tension. All the tests were performed under force control regime using strain rates defined in literature by Douglas and Billington. In order to be able to perform both compression and tension tests, we customized the Zwick testing machine with the 50 kN load. We added two circular steel plates, careful bonded to the specimen and face, with epoxy resin. These plates have four holes to bolt them to the testing machine plates. A swivel was used above the specimen end cap. The bottom end cap of the specimen was fixed. These accessories avoid instability and bending moments during the alternating phases of uniaxial compression and tension. Two strain gauge of 120 ohms and a dummy gauge were used to measure lateral deformation and compensate the electrical resistance. The data acquisition system Quantum Hex was used to acquire signal and sensor information. Attraction to compression ratio of one tenth was used. Two different loading schemes were applied: cyclic compression and reversed cycling compression tension loadings. Precautionary test parameters were used to not damage the testing machine and the instrumentation. A low number of cycles and loading rates equivalent with the elastic feed of the material were used. A traction to compression ratio of one tenth was adopted. In the graph at the top, the light blue and the dark blue signals are superimposed, corresponding respectively to 1000 and 3000 compression cycles. The specimen number one was subjected to a compression loading from minus 0.07 to minus 9.86 MPa. The specimen number two was subjected to a compression loading from minus 0.07 to minus 29.59 MPa. A loading rate of 7,800 newton on second was used. Deformation can be seen for the specimen in the graph at the bottom. You can see results from the reversed cycling tension compression testing of concrete. In the graph above, 
the dark grey and the light grey signals are superimposed, corresponding both to 10 cycles. The loading was applied from 0 0.33 to minus 3.29 MPa on the specimen number 3 and from 0 0.99 to minus 9.86 MPa on the specimen number 4. A loading rate of 380 newton second was used. The graph of the bottom shows the deformations for the specimens. Results obtained so far testing innovative cementitious materials are promising and can be summed up as improvement of the flexural strength, improvement of fracture energy, and improvement of the ductility. The objective of our research will be to develop the constitutive relationship for innovative cementitious composites, to numerically implement the constitutive relationship for innovative cementitious composites, to investigate ductility and durability existing buildings. The experimental campaign is ongoing. One next step of our research is the evaluation of the influence of scale effects, testing specimens with different dimensions. We will take into account variability and reproducibility of the testing result by employing a minimum number of free specimens per loading condition. Another next step of our research is the comparison between cored specimens and specimens cast in molds to evaluate the disturbing effects of the coring on the resistance measured. Thank you.